we are ready to sally forth on our adventure in cognitive psychology, looking at the information processing model, we will look at long-term memory next. And here we go, we got this nice model again. Stimuli come into sensory registrar, we attend to it, it goes into short-term memory, and we are going to look at long-term memory next, and it will be exciting, I promise you. Long-term memory. The capacity is almost infinite. We hold a lot of stuff forever. Everything we've always encountered is in here. It's not a matter of storage. It's a matter of retrieval. Every bit of information you've ever encountered is here. As an example, you don't believe me? Sometimes a smell will bring you back to a certain place or a song. All right, that's that trigger mechanism. Everything we've encountered, we do remember in some form. Now, we have types of memory, and uh, we have explicit memory. This is memory that we can access. It can be recalled and consciously considered. Implicit means it's out of awareness. This would be our unconscious memory, and this memory can influence our thoughts and our experiences. Right? Having stereotypes is one of these things. If we don't acknowledge them, they can influence our thoughts, our behaviors, and our perceptions. Memory is stored in a different form. Episodic memory is memory of specific incidences. All right? Episode. I always think of a episode like on TV. All right? So it's memory of episodes. Semantic memory, that's the kind we use in school a lot, that is memory of information, propositions, uh, meaning, information. And procedural member is remembering how to do something. Okay, what is the procedure for this? So we store memory in three separate ways, or three separate bins, if you want to think about it that way. Long-term memory is like a huge disk drive. Everything that you've ever encountered is uh, uh, contained here. We talked about propositional networks, and again, it's stored there in propositions. Thousands and thousands of them. A proposition is the smallest unit of knowledge or meaning that can be judged true or false. And it is stored. And when we get new information, this propositional network expands and increases. The greater this network, the easier it is for new information to connect up with things. The more you know, the more you can learn. Our memory contains millions of propositions. And again, propositions are little bits of knowledge. The propositions that we have activate related propositions within long-term memory. Storing or retrieving on the web triggers related things. Here's maybe a propositions. This is dog information. We get new dog information. It kind of vibrates and, and it stimulates this memory and it is connected up. All right. So propositions activate related propositions so we know where to store things and how things are connected up. Encoding, as I mentioned in the first part, is taking information in, finding the structure, and storing it. It's like if long-term memory was a storage garage, it's taking in new boxes, putting in new stuff, putting it in a box, and putting it in the particular place in the storage garage. Storage is holding memory or information or knowledge in long-term memory. And retrieval, then, is getting that information. Storage locker analogy, it would be like going into the locker and finding the box and the specific thing you're looking for and bringing it out. All right, this has been the end of this little session looking at the information processing model, and you see them there. Long-term memory, almost an unlimited capacity for an unlimited amount of time. It's not a matter of storage, encoding, it's a matter of retrieval.